Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandalawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting a series of cases where intervention is done on calcified vessels. This case is a 53-year-old man who is diabetic and hypertensive who had angina on exertion. His history dates back to 2014, where he had a stent for LED, and in 2016, his distal RCA was stented abroad, and back in 2021. He had his circ stented. He has normal ECG and normal echo without regional wall motion abnormality. A angiography showed a patent LID and circ stent. This is the RCA in an LIO view. It shows severe ectasia proximally, followed by critical lesion with a heavily calcified vessel, and there is some disease distally. You can notice the vessel outline from the calcification. So the plan was to do to use some intravascular imaging, followed by high pressure inflation by NC balloon or using a scoring balloon. And if the balloon is not well inflated, they maybe we use a shockwave intravascular lithotripsy to be followed by further dilatation, stenting, and post dilatation. This is the IVAS. It shows the distal stent, which was an old one and uh, a little bit undersized for the vessel. Proximal to the stent, the vessel is widely out, open, but there is extensive calcification, superficial one. With further, further pullback, we see narrowing of the vessel, and here we can see two arcs of calcium impinging on the lumen. With further narrowing, we, we reach to the tightest part here, which shows around 360 degree ring of calcification, with excessive reverberation, where it's difficult to assess the vessel size. And the proximal part is widely opened. So we thought that a change of a plan is, is, is a better choice, and thought that shockwave intravascular lithotripsy is a better choice and is safer initially, because it allows you to crack that calcium with low pressure inflation. The system consists of a generator, a connecting cable, and the balloon itself. The balloon is a 12 millimeter balloon. It is a rapid exchange one with two radio opaque markers at both sides as in any balloon. There are two emitters inside the balloon, not visible radiographically. In the C2 model, the diameter availables are 2.5, 3, 3.5, and 4, and it gives 80 pulses as maximum in 8 cycles. Every cycle consists of 10 pulses. The IVL catheter is delivered across the calcified lesion over 0.014 wire, and the integrated balloon expanded to 4 atmosphere to facilitate efficient energy transfer. An electrical discharge from the emitter vaporizes the fluid within the balloon. Actually, this fluid is 50-50 contrast and saline. This creates a rapidly expanding and collapsing bubble that generates sonic pressure wave. The waves create localized field effect that travels through soft, soft vascular tissue, selectively cracking intimal and medial calcium within the vessel wall. After that, the balloon itself can be used to inflate and dilate the vessel further and to allow to achieve a good, to achieve a good luminal uh, diameter. We use a 3.5 millimeter by 12 millimeter balloon. Normally, the balloon is inflated to four atmosphere and 10 pulses are given at each cycle with one pulse per second. The device automatically stops after giving 10 pulses and it stops for 10 seconds because you, before you start a new cycle. All of the pulses were used in this case. We can still see some indentation of the balloon, but generally it has an acceptable inflation. It's important to choose a balloon size in a one-to-one -one ratio to the vessel diameter to achieve, to achieve a good stand, a good a position of the balloon to the vessel wall. 
We chose the 3.5 balloon because we thought that it is opposed to the wall, vessel wall and the 4 millimeter balloon was not available. After that, a stent 4 by 38 was deployed. We can see nice expansion with minimal indentation. But of course, further work is needed. And this is the IVAS post stent. There is some stent under expansion distally. And particularly at the middle part where the tightest part was, there is under expansion of the stent. Here we can see an oval shape and under expanded stent. And also at the proximal part. So we dilated by NC balloon 4 by 15 multiple times up to 20 atmosphere. And this is the result which seems to be acceptable. Repeating the IVAS showed a better expansion of the stent, but still at the middle part, there is some indentation and some under expansion. So we opted for higher pressure balloon inflation and we went to the OPN balloon. This balloon has a two wall design, allows delivery of higher pressure without dog boning. It's available in sizes from 1.5 up to 4.5 and in length 10, 15 and 20 millimeter. It comes with a special inflation device that, that can reach a pressure of up to 55 atmosphere, but the rated burst pressure of the balloon is 35 atmosphere. We use a 40 by 20 balloon and inflate it to 35 atmosphere at different sides and different sides of the stent and several times. The IVAS showed a better expansion of the stent and good opposition. In the tightest part, still there is some indentation and it is oval in shape and at the proximal part is widely patent. It was the best to be achieved in this case. Here are two orthogonal views and shows acceptable stent expansion. And this is a comparison of the stent expansion in still images. So the take home message is that coronary calcification presents great challenges during PCI. Intravascular lithotripsy can change vessel compliance and facilitate vessel preparation for a better stent expansion. Higher pressure balloons are important tools to achieve good results. And the fight continues. And thank you.